Welcome to VGC, you're watching our video review of Horizon Forbidden West on the PlayStation 5. I'm running out of time, Elizabeth. The land is dying. When people refer to a sequel that's significantly better than the original, a game that's often brought to mind is Assassin's Creed and its sequel Assassin's Creed 2. The jump between those games so perfectly represents what a studio can do once they've found their feet with the first instalment of the franchise by expanding upon what worked, listening to what his player base didn't like and taking advantage of not having to learn to walk and make a game at the same time. While Horizon Forbidden West falls just short of replacing Assassin's Creed 2 in that analogy, it gets damn close. With better combat, a compelling story and a jaw-droppingly beautiful world, it's an improvement on the original in every way even if it does hold on to a few open world tropes that we could have left behind. Horizon Forbidden West picks up right after the end of the first game. If you've not played the original or have simply forgotten in the five years since its release, there's an excellent recap at the start of the game, meaning players that didn't even pick up the first game can join Aloy at this point of the story and be up to speed. Following news of an impending threat, Aloy must leave the cosy settled lands that she came to know in the first game and journey west, into a harsher, more dangerous and politically charged world on the brink of an inter-tribal war. We love that the game acknowledges how significant Aloy is to the people of the world as she enters new villages and meets new tribes. She's revered for what she did in the first game, and it doesn't fall into the sequel trope of being a complete reset. Aloy isn't having to prove herself again, she's a genuine legend of this world. This carries over to Ashley Birch's incredible performance. Already a highlight of the first game, Horizon Forbidden West sees Birch shed any naivety from her performance of Aloy instead giving her every bit of the confidence that one would have had they just saved an entire region from guaranteed destruction. However, don't mistake that for an Aloy that spends the whole game quipping and smirking into the camera. When a certain character, which we won't spoil, makes themselves known in the narrative, the shift in performance that comes with that is one of the most memorable in modern games. That's literally all we can say at the moment, but trust us when we say Ashley Birch is an absolute triumph. The entire cast of supporting characters and their performance are stronger in Horizon Forbidden West. This is aided by incredible performance capture, which allows performances with plenty of nuance and depth. The facial animation in Horizon Forbidden West is nothing short of industry leading, standing toe to toe with Sony stablemate Naughty Dog in terms of realism. This is a game where you'll call someone in from the other room and show them it to demonstrate how good games can look these days. While Horizon Forbidden West is every bit a modern open world game, instead of absolutely littering the map with enemy bases, although there are still a few, there's a much larger focus on the game's massive list of enemy creatures to take down. Favourites from the original game return, such as the iconic Thunderjaw, that there's a whole new group of beasts and variations of old ones for you to hunt. Horizon Forbidden West does a great job of making these creatures feel genuinely scary. You will come across packs of machines in the early game that if you don't sneak around or run as fast as you can away, they'll take you out. Sure, you can set up traps and slowly chip away at the various armour plates each machine has, but they hit incredibly hard. This adds to the sense of hostility you face in the Forbidden West. There were multiple times that we came across a machine from the first game full of confidence of the late game Horizon Zero Dawn Aloy, thinking we'd easily rip it apart only for it to send us back to the nearest campfire. It's never cheap, the game is just full of genuinely challenging encounters, and then a landscape of open world games where the wallpaper between missions often feels like it's there out of obligation rather than to provide fun gameplay, it's a huge breath of fresh air. The combat doesn't feel entirely complete, with melee combat while improved, still feeling inferior to the excellent bow-based encounters that dominate most of the game. While Aloy's staff is now much more well integrated into her arsenal, and new combos with the bow make the combat much more free-flowing, the encounters can slow down if you find yourself exclusively using the melee, although thankfully this is incredibly rare. Horizon Forbidden West offers two modes, one favouring performance and another favouring resolution. The performance option offers a solid 60fps with some reduced visual effects, and the resolution mode offers a 4K 30 frames per second experience. The resolution mode is truly stunning, and offers some of the most incredible open world vista we've seen in games. However, the frame rate trade-off is disappointing. While the performance mode, which we favoured, still looks great, there is a clear difference between the two, especially at those long distances. Facial animations and character models are both a highlight, as is the incredibly detailed weaponry and armour. We wish the game encouraged you to change your outfit slightly more, as there are plenty of incredible sets of armour you'll never get to see unless you seek them out. The different tribes are all unique and provide an interesting look into what it would be like to settle in this harsher environment than what Aloy knows from the first game. 
Each settlement you find is absolutely teeming with side quests that we recommend that you do as some sets of characters are slightly hurried along by the main quest which is quickly dealing with larger more intense concepts and thus leaves some of the backstory behind. The world of Horizon Forbidden West is significantly more diverse than its predecessor, offering a condensed version of several US states. The lush forests of California that have been shown in pre-release footage are as dense and as sprawling as you would expect, although we wish the game spent slightly more of its main campaign exploring this area. Even after you've finished the game, if you've not elected to explore, you'll have a huge amount of the map yet to uncover, especially in this coastal region. Horizon Forbidden West is a reminder of how good an open world game can be. The moment to moment gameplay is exceptional with best in class bow combat and an army of machines for you to take down using it. The world is vast, sprawling and full of life and interesting characters. The actual geography of the map has never been more enjoyable to explore and we found ourselves audibly gasp at some of the locations that the game has hidden away. If it wasn't already, Ashley Birch's portrayal of Aloy should be held right alongside Ashley Johnson's Ellie and Christopher Judge's Kratos in the pantheon of great PlayStation protagonists. Horizon Forbidden West makes an argument for her to be at the front of the queue. There will be some open world fluff that will turn some players off, but it's entirely optional. There's an exceptional 30 hour campaign to be found in Horizon Forbidden West. However, if you're willing to take the time to explore the ruins of a fallen society, when every other corner is teeming with machines that you'll need to be at the top of your game to destroy, then Horizon Forbidden West is an incredible game and a world that we wanted to return to many hours after the credits rolled. All because of a terraforming system that's spiraling out of control. And only I can fix it. Only I have your genetic code. It won't be long before we hit the point of no return. And then... Extinction.